Okay, so um, let's talk about section four. We're going to talk about um, exponential equations first, and then the second part of this is logarithmic equations, but we won't get to that today. So let's talk about an exponential equation. Um, this is an equation containing a variable and the exponent, which you have to solve for. Okay? Now, take a look at these two here. Both of these are exponential equations. All right? And you can see here in the first one, you've got a variable and the exponent, but that happens only on one side of the equation. Right? Here, you've got a variable and the exponent, but that happens on both sides of the equation. So first, when you see your exponential equation, you have to figure out which of the two types it is and then go about solving it accordingly, right? Because each have their own type of uh, solution. Okay, so um, here's how we solve exponential equations. So we're going to do the, the one type first. We're going to do the type which has a variable on both sides. If there is a variable exponent on both sides of the equation, what you want to do is you want to rewrite it so that both bases are equal. So if it's 2 to the power, it has to be 2 to the power, and so on. And then once the bases are equal, you can set the exponents equal to each other. Um, I'll come back to the other part, uh, to the second part after. Let's um, do some examples on what we just talked about. So take a look at this one here, a. Basically, you've got 4 to the power of some variable and 16 to the power of some variable. One has a base of 4, one has a base of 16. Now what you want to do is you want to make sure that both of them have the same base. All right? You can make them both 4s, you can make them both 2s, minimize your work. If you can get away with just changing one, then just change the one. Tips of the trade, or tricks of the trade, um, it's easier to start with a bigger value and write it in terms of the smaller value. So here, if I have 4 to the power of x plus 2, can I write 16 in terms of 4? That's just 4 squared times x minus 3, right? If the 2 is an exponent and the x minus 3 is an exponent, then I would just have to multiply them, okay? You can make the 4 16, but it would have to be 16 to the power of 1 over 2. And I find that's a little bit more complicated. 4 squared is 16. That's why I can rewrite the 16 as 4 squared. But if I made this 16 squared or 4 squared, then I'm changing it. All right? Okay, so now I can set these two equal to each other. And I get x plus 2 equal to 2 times x minus 3. Distribute x plus 2 equals 2x minus 6. And what's x? 8. All right? Okay, the next one, I have a 36 and a 6. Again, I can rewrite the 36 as a what? 6 squared x plus 1 equals 6 x plus 6. All right, so I'm going to set the inside equal to each other. Um, let's combine some steps. I'm going to distribute first off. So that's 2x plus 2 equal to x plus 6. When I subtract x's, I get x plus 2 equals 6. So x is 4. All right? So that's the simplest case. Now, what if you have bases that are not directly, you know, related? So I have a 9 and I have a 27. I can't write this as 9 to the power of something. So what am I going to do? Make them both 3s, right? Break it down into a, a more elemental base. So I can rewrite the 9 as 3 squared. And I can rewrite the 27 as 3 cubed. Okay. Again, same base. Doesn't matter what the base is, just that it has to be the same. Setting these equal to each other, I get 2x plus 4 equal to 3x minus 9. 
I'm going to subtract two x's. So 4 equals x minus 9. And then when I add 9, x is 13. Right? Okay, what about the 25s? 5 squared and 5 cubed. So 2x plus 2 is 6x. Two is four X and I divide by four. So X is two over four, which is one half. So that's right is twenty-five or one half. Either. Doesn't matter. Okay. Now take a look at this one. I have a one third and I have a one over eighty-one. First figure out, right, recognize that they're in the same form. So I have 1 over 3 and 1 over 81. It's not like 1 is a fraction, 1 is a whole number, right? So now if we work, um, like, okay, so if I have 1 over 3 squared, how much is that? The 2 belongs to the 1 and the 3, so that's 1 over 9, right? If I have 1 over 3 cubed, that belongs to the 1 and the 3, so that's 1 over 27, right? So I could square the whole fraction, or I could raise the whole fraction into a power and get something else. So how can I rewrite the 1 over 81? 1 over 3 to the power of 4. So what I could do is this. I could rewrite it as 1 over 3 to the power of 4. Okay, so now how did I come up with that? I have a 3, I need an 81. What's the exponent of 3 that gives me 81? Well, that's a 4. Since they're both 1 over the number, 1 over the number, I could just keep it as is and put a positive 4 on the outside as an exponent. And, okay, so... What else do I have? I have times 2 thirds here. And on the left side of the equation, I have 1 over 3 to the n. So now what do I have? Same, expo same basis, n equals 4 times 2 thirds. Remember, that's over 1, so 8 over 3. Yeah. OK. So look at this one. I had a fraction 1 over the number, 1 over the number. Same format of a fraction. Here, it's a little different. 1 over a number, and then a whole number. So a fraction to a whole number. What's the deal with exponents when we're going from a fraction to a whole number? What type of exponent gives us that? The negative exponent, right? The negative exponent. So this is 1 over 2 to the power of c. Okay. 2 to the power of what gives you 64? 6, right? But now I'm going to do 1 over 2 to the power of negative 6. Does that make sense? Does, is that red thing equal to 64? When you flip it over, it's 2 to the 6, which is 64. Times a 1 half. So what's C equal to? Negative 6 times a half, negative 3. Questions? All right, so these are all ones where you have uh, an exponent on both sides. Okay, what about this one? What if there is a variable exponent only on one side of the equation? Then what you have to do is take a logarithm of both sides. All right? That's the process. We, we say take a log of both sides. The thing is that the base should equal the base of the power. Okay? And then when the base is e, remember the logarithm is just ln. 
right? So let's do these now. I have 4 to the x equal to 13. Here is my power. What's the base of that power? 4. So if the problem that I'm given is 4 to the x equals 13, I have to take log base 4 of both sides. And now what happens to log base 4 of 4? To the x. It goes away, so I'm just left with x equals log base 4 of 13. All right? And now if you don't have a calculator on you, that's good enough. But if you've got a calculator, which you guys do, how much is that right now? Can you give me four decimal places? Okay. All right? And now, x, it equals precisely log base 4 of 13. Once we plug it in the calculator and then we have to round off the decimal, then um, it's approximately equal to. It's not a deal breaker whether you use equal to or that sign, but I like my students to be, you know, math aware. Okay? All right. What about this next one? What's the base here? Base is E, so what do we use? Ln. LN. Good. So it's going to be ln of e to the 2x plus 1 equal to ln of 8. Okay. And here I'm just going to be left with 2x plus 1 equal to ln of 8. I'm not done yet because I have to solve for x. So what do I do now? Right, but now look, if I keep it that way, can I subtract 1 from both sides? So 2x is ln of 8 minus 1, not ln of 7, over 2. So Nadeev, if you just kept going, subtract 1 and then divide by 2. That's approximately how much? This would be on the calculator section. Mm -hmm. What did we get here? How much? It could be. Mm -hmm. 0 0.5397. Seven. Awesome. All right. Here, base is 3. So log base 3, 3 to the x equals log base 3, 7. How come it's log base 3? Because, the... because the space is 3. So x is log base 3 of 7. And how much is that? 1.7712. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It's the argument of the log. It's called the argument. It's basically the value of 3 to the 7, right? Or 3 to the x. Okay, so here, what if the base is e, what logarithm do we take? ln, ln. So ln of e to the 4 minus 3x equals ln of 6. ln of e is going to cancel one another. So 4 minus 3x is ln of 6. What now? Subtract 4. Divide by negative 3. x is ln of 6 minus 4 over negative 3. No. It's minus 4 separately, correct. ln of 6, close parentheses, minus 3, a uh, minus 4.
the whole thing divided by negative 3. It's um, 0.7361. It's up, yeah. 0.7361. All right? I know, it's over positive. I mean, it's negative 3x. I'm sorry. I thought you were saying that. All right, so. No, because ln of 6 minus 4 is a negative number.